So what do you think when you hear the word chloroform? TV and films have dramatized its use as an instant sedation agent so much that it has its own page on TV Tropes website. Yet, despite this current negative association, chloroform was one of the first anesthetics popularized within the medical community. It served as a powerful sedative in a time when painful surgeries were the norm. In particular, its discovery and use was championed by one Sir James Young Simpson, a Scottish obstetrician of the 19th century. But before we discuss his contribution to the medical community, especially with chloroform, we must first pay a visit to April 7th, 1853. On this date, Queen Victoria gave birth to Prince Leopold with Jon Snow at her bedside administering chloroform. This was the Queen's eighth pregnancy, yet her first time receiving any pain relief. Such drugs were still new and not widely accepted culturally. The Queen's choice precipitated a radical shift in public opinion towards anesthesia giving, uh, during childbirth. How did we get here? As mentioned earlier, one of the first pioneers of sedation in childbirth was Sir James Young Simpson. Born in 1811, Simpson came from a Scottish family in Bathgate, Scotland, and had completed his medical studies at the University of Edinburgh. Although he received his MD in 1832, Simpson almost did not complete this degree. When observing surgeon Robert Liston performing a breast amputation without anesthesia, Simpson allegedly fled from the hospital and attempted to re-enroll as, as a law student. This experience led Simpson to reflect on the poor state of affairs in surgery, leading him to wonder to, to, to think if anything could be done to reduce pain in procedures. His first clinical position was that of a general practitioner. He later took on the role as Professor of Medicine and Midwifery at his alma mater at Edinburgh, where he started his practice as an obstetrician. In addition to his burgeoning career as a researcher, one of Simpson's earliest contributions to medical practice was his improvement in the design of the obstetrical forceps. This device, now known as Simpson's forceps, remains in use even to this day. Eclipsing this improvement, however, is Simpson's contribution to obstetric anesthesia, and that is where his true legacy lies. The history of modern anesthesia traces its origins to the use of ether and nitrous oxide in the 18th century. While these agents were used for general surgery, their use of anesthesia in childbirth was limited. Simpson was among the first to popularize ether in obstetric practice, although he sought to find an alternative due to the unpleasant side effects of ether, including eye irritation and nausea. Working alongside his assistants, George Keith and Matthews Duncan, Simpson tested several compounds until he stumbled across chloroform. The potency of this newly discovered agent was patently obvious. After all three sift sniffed it, they were all promptly knocked out. Simpson was thrilled and believed that he had found an anesthetic better than ether. On November 8, 1814, chloroform was first used in a first obstetrical case on a patient, Jane Carstairs. It was a success and Simpson was not slow to share his success with the medical community. There were several benefits of chloroform, including its potency and simplicity of use. A doctor just needed to put a moistened towel over the patient's nose and mouth. There were, however, some skeptics of this apparent wonder drug. One notable skeptic was Jon Snow, the one of epidemiological fame, not the character on a famous TV show. Although colleagues with Simpson, Snow disagreed on important details of sedation administration during delivery, including dosing and the extent to which the patient should be anesthetized. Today, these concerns have been shown to be valid, as chloroform is known to cause ventricular, ventricular fibrillation, which ultimately impairs the heart's, functions, uh, uh, the heart's ability to function properly um, and pump. With this history in mind, we now turn to the question, was Dr. James Simpson a hero or a villain? In his own time, there were some individuals who per perceived his actions as contrary to the accepted norms. Notably, Simpson counters a literalist view that the Bible um, of the Bible held by many of the time. In particular, the interpretation that labor pains were a punishment among women for original sin. Although a devout believer, he was a member of the Free Church of Scotland, he opposed anesthesia being withheld from women on a religious basis. And he wrote about them and he wrote his objections and his many pamphlets on the topic. Today, we argue that Dr. Simpson is a hero because he fought against the public's moral and religious objections to obstetric anesthesia, believing the importance of his patient's discomfort and experience of medical treatment.